Welcome to Kyoto, Japan. Hello, we would like to purchase a train ticket for Kyoto and around Kyoto for three days. Ooh, we have arrived. Okay. Yeah. This is the most this affordable, is our room. Yeah, most affordable um, hotel in in the area. So we are paying like twenty dollars each. Yeah. <laughs> Let's check out our room. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Okay. This is the view. I think this is. There's more view here. <laughs> <laughs> what a funky room. Anyway, this is where we're gonna be staying while we are exploring Kyoto. There's no view. There's no view. <laughs> Sorry. There you have it. It's always fun to see. Ooh, yeah, there is a bathtub. Oh, nice. Always in Japan, you have these sliding doors. And this toilet is, is heated. So when you sit down, the rim is hot. So in, during winter and then you have like a big control panel here on the right. Good morning everyone and welcome back to your new vlog. This time we are exploring Kyoto here in Japan. Big city. I'm very excited to show you. Right now, I'm standing in central of Kyoto, Karasuma area to be exact. And this is where our hotel is located and will be our starting point for the rest of this video. And in this area, there's just so many things to do. We have restaurants, we have shops, and we have walking streets. After spending a week here in Japan, I realized that everything about this place is so uniquely its own thing. It's like the Japanese never copied any other culture. They just looked at what the other cultures have and took pieces and bits of it and made it their own. Which I think is super cool. And it really gives a unique character to the place. While I am here in Japan, I partnered up with Fluent Talk and their new device, T1 Mini, which is gonna be allowing me to talk to the locals live. This is a translation device, and I'm so excited to show you how much easier it's going to be to travel Japan with it. You know when you're out walking around in a foreign city, you never know exactly what you can encounter. Here in Japan, I did experience that a lot of people actually do speak English, but then sometimes if you're ordering something a little bit more specific, let's say you want your coffee without milk, this is where this device comes in super handy. So this is what it looks like, and it has 36 languages and 88 accents built into it with a one-year free data plan when you get it so you don't need to worry about Wi-Fi or anything also has a camera in the back so if you see a street sign and you don't understand it or maybe you're in the train station like I've been and I can't find the directions perfect to use now one of the things that I really love about this device is that it's so easy to use so small and I only I need to click one button if I'm in a situation where I want to ask a local something hello my name is Martin I'm wondering where the train station is and since I don't know Japanese, I don't know if that's right. But what's really nice is that it has a very bright and good LCD display here that I can scroll down and see. Oh, it says, hello, my name is Martin. I'm wondering where the train station is. That's perfect. So I know that it also translated the right thing. 
And whenever someone's ready to speak back to you, you just hold it up to them, hold the button, and there you go. So Fluent Talk is not made as a device that will handle the small communication things. It's, it's more built like an emergency thing that you can keep on you at all times that if an emergency comes up, let's say there's a really big change in your flight details or like I told you earlier, asking about another milk than just a regular milk. That's when this device is so amazing. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to get your hands on one. It's very affordable and I think it's a lifesaver when you go traveling, especially to foreign countries that you know, are not that common with speaking English. Always ask for the English menu, <laughs> if they have. I cannot have clams, so can it be Gohan instead? Okay, <laughs> Perfect. Perfect use, use case for the Fluent Talk F1. In an instance where Ava can't have something on the menu, it's sometimes really hard to explain. But with, with this one, it's yeah. so easy. So easy, you just speak to it, yeah. show it to the waiter. Oh, for lunch today, we are uh, having it in the food court inside the biggest shopping mall, it seems like, here in center of Kyoto. Pretty cool, because we're on the eighth floor and you can overlook the valley yeah. and really appreciate the mountains in the back of the city. But uh, today is a cultural day, so we have so much to see. We're gonna try to explore some temples and... And what was the name of the place we're gonna head to, Abba? Secret! Uh, because you might do a research now and see where we're going. <laughs> Alright, so stay tuned. Everywhere we eat in Japan, it's like they take their business so seriously. It's so good. The food is just so tasty. Amazing. All this culture in one place. Hello. Hi. Best part about going to Japan is that the temples are for free. You don't need to pay for it. Wow. I mean, are you kidding me? You can see beautiful architecture for free. Mm hmm. And get good that's, photos. Yeah. That's not usual. When you go to other countries, as soon as you enter an establishment or whatever it is, a gate costs you 10 euros. That's true. Yeah. That is very true, Ada. We're staying in Kyoto for three nights and for us always when we're traveling the first day is just go out there see what you can find try to get a little familiar with the city landscape some of the street yeah, so that's what we're doing today yesterday guys we took the train from Osaka here to Kyoto it was fairly fast I would say 30 minutes to one hour train ride we got the subway before making it into our hotel where we're staying at very central For someone like me who's never been to Japan before, I've never been to China, I've never been to Japan, I've never been to Vietnam, even Korea. So this part of the world, something completely different than from what I've ever seen or experienced before. So many new impressions. We just walked for 10 minutes, but we're exhausted. It's very hot. Don't go here during summertime if you're not a warm person. Maybe go, actually, maybe go on like October, November, so the weather is more uh, reasonable, or like May and June. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, we made it to the district around the Hukanji Temple, which you can barely see sticking up there. And now we're gonna show you what it's like to walk around here in the narrow streets. I think it's gonna be really good. 
Have it. Ready to go? Yeah. Vending machines everywhere. What? Even in the older districts. Ooh, look at this street. And here you guys go. Wow. Wow. Listen to how quiet it is here. So nice. What a colorful ball. So I think maybe you were able to write on them. Yeah, you can write on one and then leave a wish. So all these colorful balls. Someone's written something on them for good faith. Wow. So cute. All these small streets leading everywhere. It was really nice. Four thousand eight hundred. So like thirty-five dollars or forty dollars, I think. So you can also rent at one of these kimonos for a day if you want to take photos here in Kyoto. Two thousand. Two thousand yen. So that's something like that. Close to twenty dollars for a whole day. You can rent a kimono. Pretty cool. Know that it's going to be hot. Yeah. If I wear one now. All right, it's time for public transportation. Yeah. You have the Ikoka card. You. So this is a car that you top up every time you have to buy something in like convenience stores, public transportation. And where are we taking the bus now? We're going to Kyoto Station. What does it say? Let's see. Does it work? Yeah. So oh my gosh, it's so convenient. It really is. It's translating now right in front of me. Oh, here we go. So what's so nice, we're trying to find our way using public transportation, going all the way to Kobe. Kobe? Kobe. Kobe in Japanese. And then it's so nice to have one of these because it has a built-in camera in the back. So you can just take photos of the signs and everything's in Japanese. And it will translate to you directly like on the screen. So, turns out, Albert, we are going to take the train. We need to go down right here. And we made it to Kyoto Station. This is where we're going to be taking the train into Kobe. So sometimes in uh, Google Maps, it'll say letter A train, but you have to check which direction the train is going to. So for us, there are two A. Google Maps says we have to go to the A, but the Sonom Sanomiya line oh my God. to Kobe here, which is in here. So this one <laughs> is in a different line. Uh -huh. So, if we take the other train, even if it's letter A, we go to the wrong place. <laughs> That's also one thing why I always get lost. Sometimes I forget, oh yes, it's the letter A. I take the letter A, but I took the wrong letter A train. That's a tip that maybe some of you don't know, which can be confusing. World famous beef. Are you ready? Are you ready for it? <laughs> the legit birthplace of Kobe beef. Kobe! We made it to Kobe! Wow! So, where is the best beef to find out? Of course! If you wanna eat authentic Kobe beef, you gotta check out Ikuta Road. Ayan. Right here and then, you will see different restaurants serving Kobe beef in different styles. <laughs> it feels like the first time I came to the US. That's the only way I can describe it. It's a good feeling. Oh, looks like we found a place to eat. I think it's time for the most expensive meal on our vacation here in Japan, Ava. Yeah. But it's going to be worth it because you're not here every day in Kobe mm. eating Kobe beef. True. True. No, this will be our most expensive meal yeah. throughout the Japan because uh, it's just worth it. So here's set A and B. So the set A only has appetizer and grilled vegetables, but for set B it has like the soup, appetizer, and grilled vegetable salad and yeah. rice. Mm -mm. Look at the prices here though. Yeah. Okay, we need to get this one right. Hi. Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, I, me, I am yes. um, yes. And Gohan. 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 Gohan.
pomegranate. Yeah. Okay. Let's... Turns out here the waiter actually speaks really good English. Even though she does, I am keeping this on, having it right next to me because sometimes it's just a question you never know. Chopstick comes inside this paper. I feel like a little kid who has to learn everything. <laughs> mm. Mm. That was phenomenal. Wow. I'm gonna Hmm. The chef just served us our Kobe beef in front of us and we get to take photos of it, obviously. Oh, it's so tender. Who would you like your steak? Medium, please. Uh, medium, medium, please. Yes. Thank you. Wow, what a cool experience. Kobe beef in Kobe. So what's the trick behind beef of a Kobe? You know more about this than me. Um, so the cows were um, fed beer. They were for the beer? Yeah, and, it, and you can say it's a Kobe beef unless it's it came from Kobe. Mm. Look at the marbling. Ah, oh, you know it's gonna be a good one. Now I've been served corn soup. set up in front of us. Beautiful colors on these plates right here. You want to barbecue all of these vegetables. to try Kobe beef, authentic in Japan. Right. It melts like a chocolate inside your mouth. And just like, oh. I'm learning not to put my sticks anywhere on the table, but to put them nicely down. That's a sign of respect that Ava has been teaching me, actually. The vintage market here in Japan is huge. There's stores everywhere like this. 
and people sell their clothing and what I've been thought the average Japanese person switch out their clothing much more frequently than what we do back in Europe that's why there's a really big market for secondhand clothing and often you can find really good clothing as well for a very affordable price so I'm very excited and this is a new thing that I'm learning Ava is teaching me she's been thrift shopping for 10 years and it's just very interesting so much to learn and it's almost like a treasure hunt so So that's first. That's Thank nice. you, Adipa. This I will get for me. We can share it. <laughs> yes, you buy it. Oh. What are we looking for, Alan? Kobe. No, I just wanted to show you what uh, Kobe is like at night. So you can see different types of restaurants that serve Kobe beef, of course. Mm. Um, it, and it's just right to the station, the Hangyu Kobe Sanomiya station. Just right. It's a lot of options. It is. <laughs> Japan really comes out at night. So interesting. And on the right side here, you also have restaurants. Train is just up there. So many options right by the train station here in Kobe. Alright, so we are back after that full day of exploring Kobe, starting here in Kyoto, taking the train back and forth. We got a three day train ticket so we can just jump on the trains whenever we want to. And now we are back in the streets of Kyoto at night. We're gonna look for a place to eat and hopefully show you some of these older wooden buildings that this place is so known for. I scroll down the Insta page, saw a picture that I didn't want to see. Hi right, guys, we're gonna show you from modern to <laughs> traditional. Welcome to Pontocho. What can we expect to find here? Different old school houses turned into restaurants or bars. Maybe if we get lucky, we'll see a geisha. Yeah. They just they're fast though. You better be quick. Alright. They run like I'm on it. Or they even charge you a seating fee because it's so popular. Five dollars just to sit down. And guys, it's not weekend. That's why these streets are not that crowded. We're inside Stardust Bar right now. And I'm starting to realize that when you are in Japan, you need to have cash. I've heard stories about exes calling up brides on the Okay, I think we're in a beer mode. We just turned into a beer mode, yeah. <laughs> I haven't drunk in a while. So, <laughs> but don't worry. I just, sadly, I tested negative on my pregnancy test. <laughs> oh shit. So, I think it's time to check it out. Because I haven't been drinking in a while. Let's do it. Let's see if we can survive. This is interesting. This is turned into a pub crawl here in Osaka. Sorry, in Kyoto. <coughs> this is our date. This is our date. What's up, fam? Gang, gang. Big night. Wow. It was Before fun, you. though. It was fun. Yeah, it was bigger for me because I had a couple more beers than you. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. Big coffee. I think it's so fascinating to walk into a Starbucks in a foreign country. Mm. 
What is our plan for today, Avid? I'm going to the bit the northwestern side of Kyoto. Do we have to take a train? Yeah, two trains. I've actually lived here in Kyoto for, was it three weeks? Yes, three weeks in uh, 2018. December 2018. A couple years ago. And she's very familiar with the streets and the places, so that's why I'm leaving all the guiding up to her. <laughs> First time eating at a Japanese diner. Very cool. It's like seats around the bar and there's also seats for couples. And then you order at an iPad right in front of you. Also brought the T1 Mini just in case there's something we want to ask the waiter for. So having the miso soup with beef and rice and also some uh, fried onions in there. Japanese dining. <laughs> It has great laser free peak also. So full now. <laughs> and when you're traveling around here in Japan, look for these places, information desks. These people speak English and help tourists. And then we have these vouchers. Like there's so many different things though. Like these are three different types of transportation companies and each one. Hello, hello, hello. After one hour, we made it here in Arashiyama. Arashiyama. <laughs> this is a popular spot for renting a kimono. So if you're gonna rent a kimono, you do it here. Uh. Oh my gosh, which one? <laughs> so, Thank, Thank you. you. Yesterday. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Thanks for watching the vlogs. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, selfie. Three, two, one. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Welcome to the bamboo forest. <laughs> I'm running out of breath. It's a little uphill, but the reason why I'm I'm a little exhausted is because it's hot. So bring a bottle of water. I've never been inside such a big bamboo forest before. Wow. Listen to the sounds. What happened, Alvin? Oh my gosh. So I didn't seal this properly for some reason and I just put it inside the, my bag because I was so excited to take a lot of photos and videos that I didn't notice that it was slowly spilling. <laughs> Luckily, my passport has a Ziploc. Yeah. Yeah, it's inside the Ziplocs. I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah, that was unfortunate. I know. <laughs> and I'm also sweating at the same time because it's so hot. See the temperature. It's very is humid. Right now. It's so yes. humid. It must be like 30 degrees, oh. but 90% humidity. Okay, so let's check this out. We are in Arashiyama. Okay, it's 31 degrees. Oh, let's see this. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather have this than rain. So. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Turn 
turns out trash cans are really hard to find when you're commuting here in Japan. But occasionally you do find them, so what we do is we save up our trash, keep it in our pockets, and then we throw them when we come across one, like here. Oh, throwing the trash. Well done. We are looking for food. We found this very big food court. Look how organized and clean this is. Yeah. We're in a supermarket. Oh my gosh. Wow. Beef Haven, man. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> like the way it's stacked is just perfect. <laughs> So good, check it out. I love you in a way that has been hard to define. Let's go out, let's go dance in the night. Adrenaline is pumping, engines up for the flight. And it couldn't be a better taste after everything I faced. I, 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 I send a little luck my way. All right, we made it to Fushimi Inari. This temple is uh, actually dedicated to the god of rice here in Japan. There's statues of foxes everywhere around here. And also it has a very famous path that leads up to the mountain behind us here, which you've probably seen in some photos. And I'm very excited to bring you guys there. Check this guy's out. When you're here, you can buy one of these, write a rish on it and hopefully it will come true for you. Very cool. Maybe we should do that, Ave. We have reached the Vermilion Tori Gates, famous for this location. Wow. This is where you get photos. Right, tunnel leads to this spot where you can also keep going all the way up to the top of the mountain but we're not gonna do that today but it's definitely such a nice place to visit I've heard that if you come in the morning you can avoid the crowds for me on this journey it was more about having the ability to see it so I'm very happy I went here Wow I'm very happy that was a good day. That was a lot of things. <laughs> how about you? How are you feeling? Feeling tired. I think yeah. I need to rest first. <laughs> it's hard to be the navigator, making sure that we go to the right spot, sure we get there on time. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Thank you. I'm happy that you are enjoying your time. Thank you, Kyoto. It's been amazing. Next up, Tokyo. Was it all in my head when you said you love me? Cause no one can love me better than you did. And I'm still not over it. Did you forget? I put you before. 